Earlier this year, I did an unboxing, and I picked up this HP Omen 17-inch gaming laptop. Now, I have no complaints about this laptop, but we're going to be doing a little bit of an upgrade today. Now, this laptop has a Core i7 processor, an RX 580 8GB graphics card, 12GB of RAM, and a terabyte hard drive. Now, the upgrade we're going to be doing today is after, you know, noticing and reading some specs about the motherboard of this laptop, I realized that it can actually accommodate up to 16 gigs. So what I went and did, I picked up another 8 gigabyte stick that uh, is a DDR4 RAM stick uh, at 2133 megahertz. And I'm going to show you guys how to install that here today. Now, I also picked up a terabyte hard drive because I thought I read somewhere that this had a free, like, separate hard drive bay. And turns out it doesn't. So I'm going to probably be using that terabyte drive for something else along the lines. But let's get this laptop open and install this RAM. I'm going to be using an electric screwdriver only because it's going to be so much easier. And I'm going to be putting the screws on the side of me just for the sheer fact that I think I won't lose them that way. Now, what we're going to do is hopefully install this RAM with no issue. And I also don't really recommend doing this the way I'm doing it, sitting on a bed because of possible static electricity. However, the table that I thought I had that I was going to use to kind of show this off, turns out I have no idea where it went. That's why we're sitting on the bed doing this. I'm going to be as safe as possible. Now, there's about, I want to say about 10 screws uh, going into this thing. And I have opened it before. Which you would think, the fact that I've opened it before, I would kind of know that there was no extra hard drive spot. But I did notice a M.2 slot in here. Um, and I might use that for a possible solid state drive at some point, but I'm not really sure. Now, some of these screws are a little harder to get out, especially the two up top. However, we're going to work with that the best we can without any issues. Now, getting this back panel off also is a little bit of a hassle sometimes. So pretty much what you want to do is I like to go from the top actually and start to pop it off a little bit. Once you get it, it comes off nice and like kind of easy. Don't be afraid to use a little force. Um, it's what you're going to have to do. This laptop was built with quality, so I uh, commend HP for that. And the back panel just kind of snaps off. Now, what's interesting, too, is former laptops I've done upgrades to, the back panel itself usually doesn't come off just kind of like that. Um, usually, it comes off in, like, sections. So, the RAM, let me show you guys, is located right here. Uh, if you guys can see. Also, it's interesting that it's an internal battery um, that you really can't replace without opening it up. So, I know for a fact the first stick here is an 8 gigabyte stick. I'm going to put that one to the side. The other one is a 4 gig stick. It's funny because the back of my case looks like it's been burned at some point. I have no idea why. That might just be the coloring. Now, this stick here, yep, is the 4 gigabyte stick that we're going to be replacing. So we're going to put that one in first. And we're going to pop this open. Now, with RAM, what you want to kind of do is always make sure it's within the same like megahertz frequency. Just so that you're not really compensating or um, taking away from any benefits and speed that the other RAM might be um, kind of outputting. Now, warranty void if removed. And pretty much what we're going to have to do is just, these go in on an angle here. Um, so we're going to have to put it down like that. And then it snaps right in. We've got the 8 gig in there. Let's grab the other 8 gigabyte stick. Yep, right here. I don't really know much about Patriot RAM. I'm going to guess they're decent. Um, I haven't 
seen any bad reviews on them, especially at least when I was buying the RAM. Now, we have both of these secured in here. Um, so now I'm going to get this HP laptop put back together, and we're going to look at the BIOS to make sure it's registering the RAM. And then we should be good to go. Now you're going to want to put this cover back on. It actually kind of slides and clicks right back into place without an issue. You guys can kind of hear all that clickiness. And little by little, we're going to want to put the screws in. Let's hope I can do this without losing a screw. And we're gonna, obviously, if you're using an electric screwdriver, make sure it's in reverse now. Gonna make sure we get all of these back in so the laptop stays sturdy. A lot of times when I open up my video game consoles, I lose a couple screws. Um, and in my mind, I've been told I've lost a couple screws too, but that's another story, guys. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, just throwing it out there, I should do more tech, view, um, tech videos, because I know there's a broad audience out there that loves to watch tech videos, and I love to actually work on technical stuff. I know a lot of my channel is, like, product reviews, and not really as much tech as I would like, but I really don't have as much space as I would like currently, probably once I get my own place. I plan on building computers and stuff like that, just to kind of keep things interesting for the channel. Um, actually, let's screw these top two in that didn't come out of the panel. But I feel like those are there to secure something, like aside from obviously the back of the, um, the back of the board onto the computer again. And of course, like always, my camera gets blurry at the most awkward moments, but I see it fix itself. There we go. Do I really only have one screw left? I do, okay. So technically I didn't lose anything, which is good. I tell you, an electric screwdriver definitely comes in handy when doing things like this, just for the sheer fact that um, it makes everything a lot easier, especially if it's magnetic. Now, you don't want to really strip the screws, obviously, in case you ever have to do any other upgrades, but that's all on, nice and smooth. So let's turn the laptop back on. Let me try to refocus my camera here. There we go. And we're going to see in the BIOS if it recognizes the RAM. So I turned it on, as you guys can see. We're going to press F10. Is it not recognizing the RAM? The computer itself isn't really even turning on right now. Why? The screen didn't even illuminate. Let's see. Alright guys, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this video on pause. I'm going to open this bad boy up and see what's causing the issue. And then I'm going to get back to you when this thing's finally up and running. So give me two seconds. Alright guys, so I'm back. Um, I brought the BIOS up. It is showing 16 gigs of RAM. If I can show you that without it being blaring, it's going to be there somewhere. Um, I really don't know what happened the first time. Uh, basically all I did to fix this, and at first I thought maybe I had a bad RAM stick. I went in. I, let's see if I can look at the system log, actually. I went in, and I just kind of switched where the RAM was sitting. 
Um, and somehow, somehow that fixed it. Um, like I, the eight gig that was originally in here, I moved to where the four gig was. And then the new eight gig I put where the original eight gig was. And I really, really don't know how that fixed it, but it did. Uh, and the RAM is now reading properly. So after a few technical difficulties, um, I'm ready to finally put this back together the right way again. And I'm just really also confused kind of as to why it did this. Um, if any of you other like tech people out there could maybe explain to me why the old RAM seemed to be causing an issue with the new RAM in the slot that it was in. I've never come across an issue like that. Um, especially when the RAMs seemed like they were the exact same type of RAM stick. They weren't made by the same company, but they had the same uh, megahertz-ness to them. Um, they had pretty much everything was in line with what it should have been at least to my knowledge um i'm just really confused as to why it did that the way it did um but what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to go ahead i'm going to get this back to where it should be get windows back up and loaded just so we can verify that everything is working properly and i didn't somehow screw something up just switching RAM sticks, um, which I don't believe I could have done. Aside from the fact that uh, as much as I said I didn't want to strip a screw, I actually seemingly did on the top of the case. So this one screw up here actually wasn't coming out. And well, if I have to keep waving to my camera, uh, hopefully to fix it, because a cell phone camera, guys, it really likes to go blurry, and then you have to readjust yourself to its liking. Um, but yeah, the top screw somehow got stripped. I think, as I was saying, you don't want to strip screws, so that's just karma in itself. Um, but overall, after getting past that issue that we were having, it seems to be good. I'm just going to put these screws back, like I said. And we should be good to go. I don't plan on really ever opening this laptop again, which is awesome. Um, because it kind of has the max of what it needs, unless I do want to put that M.2 card, probably like an SSD in there. But let's just get this all back up and running. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Something back there felt a little loose, but turns out no, which is good. And as you guys can hopefully see, the screen turns on, and we get the Almond logo. It is hopefully going to load up good. Uh, I'm probably going to have to clean my screen at some point. But I did find it weird, like I mentioned, that the location of the RAM sticks seemed to be an issue. Um, but aside from that... This thing is going to be up and running, hopefully after it boots. Just wondering why, it looks like there's like a light that keeps flashing. Oh no, that was actually my uh, the record button light on the camera. Something about the bottom of this case seems like it's still loose somewhere, so I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But yeah, we got this back up and running. It's going to be booting up. It might take a minute because it's probably recognizing the new RAM that's in there. But yeah, guys, that's my little how-to video of installing RAM onto an HP 17-inch Omen. Um, it was a Core i7 processor. And hopefully, due to my mistakes, I was able to um, advise you as to make sure you're watching where you put that RAM stick. And make sure it's all kind of compatible. Like I said, if anyone has any answers as to why that was happening for me, um, definitely let me know. Just so I know for the future.
I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, share it, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other videos. Until next time, I'll check, uh, catch you guys later.